Welcome back to the final part of the show where Gareth Mullins is upping our barbecue game with a kebab classic. Oh, I am I... so excited. Okay, what are we making? So it's kind of in kebab? three parts, right? The first okay. part is we're going to make the kebab part. So obviously we're cooking chicken and we're going to pretend we're outside, but obviously we're inside. <laughs> little in-house joke there. So. <laughs> <laughs> This is a griddle pan. Like, what I would say to you is if you're buying something like this, if you live in an apartment and you can't barbecue, just buy something that's heavy in weight because okay. we want it to get nice and hot because we want it to conduct heat. Yeah. That's where we get that nice smoky flavour. So we need a bowl first and then we're gonna do, you're going to mix this for me now in a sec. I've got Excellent. three chicken breasts here, which right. I've just diced up. Okay, I don't have to mix it yet. I've got an onion, which I've just quartered and then cut into eighths, right? So this is how we're going to build our skewer. I have a pepper, a couple of peppers actually. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and that's it. And then I've got a few herbs. I've got mint and coriander. Mm -hmm. These aren't essential, but they're nice if you have them. Mm -hmm. okay? okay, so I always say, buy those little plants. It gives that little store for me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to add in about three tablespoons of olive oil while you're mixing. And then we're going to, this is kind of the marinating part of it. So this is what's going to get the flavour for us into the, into the meat. Okay. I'm doing a nice big heat tablespoon of uh, ground cumin. Mm, I love cumin. Ground, there's one in there. Ground coriander. And again, people tend to be a little bit shy with the spices you can afford to get a good bit in. This last one, I'm actually going to do one and a half of that. That's smoked paprika. Okay. So you'll see, you're going to have a little smell of that. The difference between regular paprika and smoked paprika. Lovely. Just see, that's, that's going to bring on that, bar you're just that's... saying you like that barbecue mm. flavour. Yeah, I, you see, I'm one of those people, right? I love barbecue sauce, I love barbecue flavours but I'm always reluctant to eat off a barbecue. And my biggest fear is, especially when it comes to chicken, it being undercooked. Yeah. Because if it's in an oven, it's being cooked yeah. throughout yeah. on the barbecue, I don't have that guarantee. Yeah. So the few things that I would say, if you are, I really like barbecue, I'm really into it. I mean, I'm a chef, right? So just, I just put that now, the grill is relatively dry. Um, that's already got the oil on it because we marinated it. Yep. I soaked my skewers in a little bit of water beforehand. That's so the skewers um, don't burn. Beautiful. Yeah. See, you've done your homework. Uh, we're going to leave that for at least a half an hour now to try and marinate. Even better if you could do it overnight. Okay. A lot of us are having friends over for dinner. Maybe you're cooking for eight or ten people. Obviously, in my world, that's nothing, no drama. But if you're not a chef, I can. Yeah. that's tricky. So do this the day before. So it's in the fridge, so you can enjoy when your guests arrive. You're not worrying about skewering up. So all I would do then is skewer it up onto the skewers. And um, if you are worried, like you were saying, Martin, about it being cooked through, start your everything on the barbecue to get the flavour, and then put it into the oven. Right. Okay. The main thing is we need to cook it past 75 degrees. Buying a little meat thermometer will be, or I think they're like 12 or 13 euro. Mm -hmm. Most of the kitchen shops is a really good investment. The other thing I'd say to you is, you notice they're not poking it, and I see people kind of squeezing the life out of it, and I'd be wondering. Yeah, most people do, yeah. because they think they're getting the heat to penetrate. What you're actually doing when you're doing that is that you're bringing the heat down from the barbecue, ah. and it's less temperature. Okay. So leave it on there, because we want it to caramelise. What we're going to serve with it is a lovely little tomato salad. So buy the wrinkly up tomatoes. Yeah. Okay. They're delicious, right? Okay, so, so that doesn't give... look like that. It's not gone off. No, no, that's it's a little bit green, so it's a little bit underripe, but it'll be nice and acidic, and it'll work perfect in our uh, in our um, kebab. I've got some cherry tomatoes for a bit of sweetness, some uh, red onion that I've sliced nice and thin, and then I'm going to just dress that with some lime juice because I want to bring it nice and zingy. Mm. So that's what you know when you're had a few fizzy drinks and you get that. That's what that comes from. Okay. No right. idea what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah, of course. You wouldn't have a clue. Yeah. 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 And then the other thing that that really wants is some salt, right? So we yeah. need to season that. Okay, a little bit of olive oil, and that's our tomato salad. It's and then fresh. I have some, the mint and coriander left over. I put all of that in, because it's just more flavour. Again, if I have friends coming over, I'm doing this before they arrive. It's on the table, ready to go. It's ready, yeah. And okay. the last piece is our garlic sauce. So I've got two big tablespoons of mayonnaise, creme fraiche. That brings a little bit of acidity. And then, obviously, garlic, which obviously. I finally chopped. But pretty hard to make gar garlic mayonnaise without it. <laughs> a pinch of uh, salt, and then if you give that a little stir for me. OK, can I just ask, with yeah. the herbs, yeah. like, like coriander, like some people love it, some people absolutely love it. Yeah. So can you use something else with yeah. the mint instead of garlic? So what would work brilliant here would be basil or parsley or even oregano, fresh thyme, any of them. Adding fresh herbs to your cookery will just bring more flavour. If you really don't like them, 
Don't put them in. It's oh. that simple. Okay, oh. now I'm going to turn them over. Um, that's what we're looking there. That one needs a bit more colour, but that caramel, you can see it there yeah. perfectly on yeah. screen. That caramelisation is what you're looking for. Yeah. Obviously, if this is the barbecue, use the uh, tongs to turn it over. And then it's that caramelisation, that it's that barbecue flavour, Martin, that you said you quite yeah. like, right? I'm going to add a little bit of oil on there just to bring it on a little bit. But in true uh, TV cookery style, here's some we prepared here's earlier. The one that he made earlier. Mm. Yeah. So this is what we're trying to get to, this caramelisation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with chicken, um, make sure it's hot all the way through, piping hot all the way through. Then you know it's cooked, OK? So I'm going to plate it up for okay. you. OK. While you're doing that, yeah. uh, lots of people have been in touch. Aoife and Limerick said, oh, I already have my ticket for Coda Line for, Mal for Malahide Castle. Roll on next Friday. Oh, Aoife's on our way. Charlie and Liz said, I've been a fan of Coda Line since the very beginning. It's great to see them sporting other Irish artists. Couldn't agree more. Going to be there extra early now to make sure I see the sporting acts. You should always be early. Yeah, always getting in early. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fiona and Cork said, I was hooked on too hot to handle. Even though Harry lost loads of the prize money, he just wanted to keep kissing he the girls, didn't he? was a like, he was yeah. so funny. He and was by far the most entertaining contestant in there, says no, Fiona. No, he was, he was, he was hilarious. Uh, Gerald and Mead said, I still can't believe the GAA Catholic story. It's absolutely mad. It's so interesting hearing Parry talk, chatting about the psychology of it all. It, when you dig into it, it really is. Like, there's just so many, like, the motivations behind why someone does it, how people get caught. It's, I could talk about it all day, I think it's so I, interesting. As they delved into that, you know, and you realise it's it was going back years. This is, I'm waiting to see it on Netflix. Like an absolute crusade, like. Yeah, absolutely crazy. <laughs> was that, there you go. Straight in. OK, I now remember what he said. If you're biting into it and it's got the sauce, it's got to wind up on your clothes, <laughs> otherwise yeah. you're not eating it properly. Um, <laughs> that's all we've got time for tonight. A massive thanks to Arthur Dinner and all of tonight's dinner guests for the chats. Absolutely. Greg O'Shea and Una Healy are kicking off your weekend tomorrow with Formula One driver Jensen Button oh. uh, calling in for a chat. Yeah, lots of fun uh, with Jensen, I'm sure. That's it. Bye for now. Thanks, Fanula. We'll see Bye. you again soon. Bye. Bye.